What does it take to be a great software developer? If you're hiring, what should you look for in a software developer to identify the great ones? In this episode, I'm going to recommend 10 things that in my opinion, make better software developers. Hi, I'm Dave Farley of Continuous Delivery and welcome to my channel. If you haven't been here before, please do hit subscribe. And if you enjoy the content here today, hit like as well. I've been extremely fortunate to work with a lot of great software developers. Some of them are well known, more of them though are not. Often when people try to break down the skills of a great developer, they focused only on the technical skills. This is particularly true of recruiters and interviewers. And while clearly some level of technical skill matters, in my experience and what the research there is, finds that technical skills aren't at the core of the difference between the greats and the people that aren't. Technical skill is certainly important, but it doesn't on its own differentiate from the great from the rest. There are people with deep technical skill that don't build great software. The stuff that matters seems to be a very different level to only technical skill. A few years ago, Microsoft undertook some academic research along with the University of Washington to explore this problem. They studied nearly 60 of their most experienced engineers, people who were widely regarded as being great at what they did by their co-workers. This was across 13 different divisions in the company. They found 53 attributes of great engineers that seemed to be consistent. These are also largely in line with my own more subjective experience. So I want to crunch these 53 attributes down into 10 things that in my experience distinguish the greats from the rest of us. If you'd like some help to improve your greatness in your development team, my training courses can help you to do that. We offer progressive tiers of discounts as well as lots of support for teams that buy our courses in bulk, including online workshops with me. Check them out here and there are links in the description below to this video. We are extremely fortunate to be sponsored by Equal Experts, Transfic, Topple and Honeycomb. Equal Experts is a multinational consultancy built on applying the ideas and techniques that we describe here every week to build great software for their clients. Transfic is a financial technology company applying advanced continuous delivery techniques to deliver low latency trade routing services to some of the biggest financial institutions in the world. Topple builds software to make pair programming easier for people who work remotely and Honeycomb help engineering teams to deeply understand their own production systems through observability. All of these companies offer products and services that are extremely well aligned with the topics that we discuss here every week. So if you're looking for excellence in continuous delivery and software engineering in general, click on the links in the description below to check them out. I used an academic paper that details research into what makes a great software engineer at Microsoft as part of my research for this video. It provides insights from an empirical study to identify what things distinguish exceptional software engineers from the rest. I asked ChatGPT to summarize the 53 attributes that the research identified as markers of greatness. It found that great software engineers have a breadth of expertise, including strong decision-making skills, teamwork, as well as software craft. They share common personal characteristics, they're passionate, curious, and constantly improving. They demonstrate perseverance, self-awareness, and adaptability. One of the major characteristics highlighted in this study is a continuous drive to learn and improve by these people. These are effective decision makers. They possess strong decision making skills that balance technical details and strategic big picture thinking. These engineers can evaluate trade-offs and make decisions that reflect a deep understanding of both the technical and business aspects of the software engineering. They are extremely effective team members and good communicators. Communication and collaboration seem to be pivotal skills. The great engineers are effective at creating a shared context and understanding, integrating the viewpoints of their teammates and building trust within their teams. They're also good at mentoring and supporting others while ensuring shared success across those teams. 
Software craftsmanship, the, the software produced by great engineers, is often described as elegantly simple, intuitive and easy to maintain. They're also creative, finding novel solutions to problems while allowing for potential future needs. That is without wasting time coding for features that aren't yet needed. Their decision making involves making careful trade-offs between constraints. They use the quality of their work to help them to go faster. One surprising finding is the critical importance of social skills. Great engineers often engage more with their peers, seek feedback and contribute to collaborative working environments. Their ability to influence others and to manage relationships is seen as crucial to their success. These findings suggest that great software en engineers are not just technically proficient, but they are also socially engaged and continually improving themselves and the environments in which they work. Communication and collaboration are the key traits that set them apart from their peers, much more so than their technical skills. This is counter to the mythology of the socially awkward lone programmer in a basement somewhere. Another important angle on all of this is represented by the findings of the well-known Google research into effective teams, where they found that the social aspects of the work were much more important than the technical skills that people brought to bear. They found that the number one predictor of success for high-performing teams was not the technical skills of the team members, but rather the degree to which they trusted one another. My own observations of programmers that we'd considered to be great align pretty well with these findings. There is more to it than the technology, and some of those things are more important than deep technical skill. So here's my list of 10 things that seem to me to characterize greatness in our discipline. The great developers work in small, even tiny steps, re-evaluating their work, their code, and where they are after each small step. This requires that they gather feedback after each small change to help them to evaluate the correctness of their change and whether it seems to be moving them closer to or further from their goal, whatever that might be. They prioritize focus on the outcome above focus on the implementation detail. This is true at every level of detail. They design from the outside in rather than from the inside out. If they're writing a function, they're thinking about that first from the perspective of somebody using that function rather than of somebody producing it. This helps them to build software that's easier to use, whether that means easier for an end user or easier for some other programming in interacting with their code. This approach is most powerfully encouraged by test-driven development because in TDD, you are always the first user of your own code. Core to this outcome focus is a deep understanding of the problem that they are working on. They will talk to domain experts to learn more, maybe end users will understand what the system needs to do and how users work with it, all to better put their own work into the correct context. Fundamentally, maintaining a focus on outcomes helps them to find their way to the elegantly simple solutions that the Microsoft research identified as markers of great programmers. Great developers are very good communicators. In part, this is fundamental in the sense that code is a form of communication between developers. Great developers need to be able to express themselves clearly in code, at least, so that it works and so that they can maintain it in future, but also so that it's easy to understand by other people, because this is how you make it easy to change in the future, even if it's you that's making the changes. Another aspect of communication that matters is the ability to communicate sometimes complex ideas simply. This is important for a variety of reasons. Not least, as physicist Richard Feynman famously described, is the best way to learn is to teach to something to somebody else. The idea here is to teach something as though the audience was a child, or at least somebody with a minimal background in the subject. This forces you to understand that thing well enough to be able to explain it in simple terms. If you can't explain something simply, you don't really understand it. So your ability to explain an idea to others so that they can understand it is both good communication in its own right and an indication of your own expertise. Try it, you'll find it improves your own insight into the thing that you thought you understood. Next in my list is that great software engineers are familiar with multiple technology stacks and paradigms. 
This matters because seeing ways to solve problems from multiple perspectives and being able to do that in multiple technology stacks helps you to generalize what is really going on. And that gives you a deeper, more valuable, more generally applicable insight into the fundamentals of what it is that we're doing. Once you see things at this more fundamental level, it's easier to adapt those ideas to work with any relevant technology, really, rather than always seeing problems only in the context of your preferred technology stack. The great developers that I know talk and think about the problems that they work on at a different level of abstraction than the merely technical that they will use to solve the problem. Sometimes the tech matters, but usually not very much. Other things are more important. This doesn't mean that they skip over the technology, but rather that I have a feeling for an insight into why their preferred technology is, is useful and correct in solving the problem that they're working on and where it's most useful and probably where its limits are too. Here we start to begin to differentiate between software development and software engineering, which is much more than a synonym for only coding. Part of any sensible definition of engineering talks about the process of solving problems as well as the tools that we use to solve them. So an organized approach to problem solving is also at the heart of great software engineers practice. It's not enough to be skilled in the tools or even to be talented at design. We build complex systems, so we need to be somewhat disciplined in our approach to solving problems. Understanding ways to make progress when we don't know the answers and can't intuit the solutions. Using our small steps to organize change to our systems into a sequence of small experiments and so amplifying our ability to learn is a good example of that. Modern professional software development is a team game. So great engineers are team focused using their skills, technical and social, to help to amplify the effectiveness of their teams. This may be through good design, providing good examples to follow for others, or good communication, sharing their ideas, insights to help other members of the team to improve their work and understanding. Most likely for the greats, this help for the team will involve both of these things as well as lots of other things. More general skills like being a good role model to other team members, for example. Creativity and innovation is an obvious marker of these high performers, but this takes many different forms. Not just interesting, elegantly simple designs that increase understanding and make the code easier to change and nicer to work on, but also creative ways of approaching solving sometimes difficult problems or to help team members grow their skills. The first software engineer, Margaret Hamilton, who led the team that developed the software for the flight control systems for the NASA Apollo missions, certainly one of the greats, talked about her team's focus on how things can go wrong. I think that this is one of the ideas at the core of a genuinely engineering focused approach to anything really, but certainly to software development. This is a key aspect of any form of engineering. This is also an important responsibility that we as technologists and engineers must own. We are the people who understand the detail of the problem that we are solving in a different way to anybody else or we can't make the software solve it. Clearly, we must also understand the nature of our solution, so we are the people best placed to understand how things might go wrong with that too. And so, we need to figure out ways to mitigate or eliminate those potential failures. This operates at every level of detail. If you are a developer working on some detail in the code, think about how it can go wrong and improve the code by designing to eliminate the failures where you can, validating inputs failing fast and clearly when things don't look safe, verifying that your code actually does what you think it does, and so on. If you're designing a globally scalable system, think about what will happen if parts of it fail or if your system is under attack or if the load on it is too high. Design how the system should respond if you can't connect to some subsystem or service. What should you do if demand is too high? Designed to make it easy to update your infrastructure to reduce the surface area for malicious attacks from outside, and so on. These are not responsibilities that we can defer to other people. These are the responsibility of the team building the software because we will see these problems more clearly than others. 
and great software engineers are always thinking about and limiting the impact of the stuff that can go wrong. Great engineers take pride in their work and do a good job of even menial tasks. They apply their usually very high standards to whatever it is that they're working on. Their build scripts and test code are as well designed as their core business logic. It's rather like an author being careful about word choice and readability, even if they're just writing an email or a short note to someone. In my experience, the greats that I've worked with are willing to work on any part of the system if it helps the team. They're not too proud to do the grunt work of a project, and when they do, they'll take pride in doing a good job there too. The last thing in my list is continuous learning. The greats enjoy learning new things, new techniques. They're open to new ideas, even if those new ideas may challenge what they already know. You may have to reach a high bar to change their minds on something because they will usually have good reasons for picking the ideas that they like. But if you can show them that something new is better, they'll adopt it very quickly, usually. So those are my 10 skills of great programmers that I've worked with. I hope that you found them interesting, and even better, I hope that you find them useful. If you do, please let us know in the comments, and if I've missed anything important, let us know that too. Thank you very much indeed for watching, and if you enjoy our stuff here on the Continuous Delivery channel, do consider supporting us and help us to make more videos like this. You can do that by joining our Patreon community. And I'd like to also take this opportunity to thank our existing patrons for their ongoing support. Thank you very much and bye-bye.